Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson on electrochemistry. I hope that you've had a great day so far. Yay, it's Wednesday, halfway to our work week. Isn't that just awesome? Okay, so let's get going. We were busy doing, as you can see, we were busy doing, yesterday we were busy doing this electrochemistry question. And what I want to do is I want to carry on. And we got as far as working out that we had silver and silver plus ions and chromium and chromium three plus ions. And we worked out that this was the cathode and this was the anode. And there was a voltage, an EMF of 1.54 volts between them. And we did the balanced equations. Now the question was, how will the initial reading of the voltmeter change? If there is a larger chromium plate is used, the Ag plus solution concentrated is doubled, and the Ag plus half cells replaced with the Sr, Sr2 plus half cell. Write down only increase, decrease, or no change. Now guys, what do we do? What do we use to work out our initial reading on the voltmeter? Do you agree that what we use is this redox table? And for a specific um, thing, for either specifically chromium and silver, there are, there are specific readings, okay? And that is going to give us the EMF, the starting voltage of that half cell. So the only thing that can change that specific EMF is if we change either of the half cells. So therefore a larger chromium plate is going to give you no change. The concentration of the silver plus ions is going to give you no change. However, there will be a change if we change the Ag, Ag plus half cell to another half cell. So let's go have a look at where this SR, SR2 plus half cell is. Okay, so if we look for it, where would it be? Hmm, who is that SR? Okay, so it's lithium, potassium, barium, calcium. I'm not seeing SR. SN, Fe, sulfur, Sn, copper 2 plus, copper plus, I, F, E3 plus, bromium, oxygen, Mn, chromium, chlorine. Hmm, there is no SR on this. So how are we supposed to know? Um, let's think about this. If it was changed from a SR to SR, can we just check this again? Unless it's a typo and it's supposed to be Sn and Sn2 plus. I think that that's a typo and that is supposed to be Sn Sn2 plus. And if that's the case, we're looking at that half reaction there. Okay, so we'll still have the chromium going to chromium 3 plus, but then do you agree that that is going to be our other half, half of the reaction? In which case, do you see the difference here is from 0.41 to 0.1? 1.4. So definitely what's going to happen is it's going to decrease. It is definitely going to decrease because the bigger the gap here, the larger the voltage. So we don't even have to work out the amount. It is definitely going to decrease. Okay, now it says the AG, AG, half, AG plus half cell is now replaced with the unknown electrode X. Okay. When operating under standard conditions, the initial reading of the voltmeter is 1.08 volts. Okay, after delivering the current for a while, it is noticed that the chromium electrode has decreased in mass. Okay, so what I want to do is, if you'll just bear with me for a second. Um, um, I'm just going to delete everything there. That's much better. And then go back to the slideshow. And then we're going to erase link. And now we can start again. Okay, because this is a new question. So what are they saying? They're saying that we've got AG, AG plus is replaced with some random X. Okay, the operating under standard electrodes, initial reading the voltmeter is 1.08, 1,08 volts. But they're now saying to you that the electrode on the chromium electrode is decreased in mass. So this is decreasing in mass. So what is happening? The CR is going to CR3 plus plus three electrons. It's decreasing in mass. Therefore, it is being oxidized. And if it's being oxidized, it must be the 
anode. So what is the question? It says, which electrode is anode? The chromium is anode. So this time, the chromium is anode. It has been oxidized, okay? Therefore, it says now, identify metal X by calculating the standard reduction potential for X, okay? So we know that E theta is E cathode minus E anode. Okay, it's on your formula sheet, you don't have to worry. This is 1,08 is equal to E cathode minus that of the anode, but we know what the anode is because we know that it's the chromium. So that there is going to be minus 0,41. So we take it across, so we go 1,08, this becomes a plus, okay? so. Okay, let me just do it slowly. Is E cathode plus 0,41. So when I take it across, it becomes a minus. So it's 1,08 minus 0,41 is E of the cathode. Okay. So then what I need to do is get up my calculator and I go 1.08 minus 0.41. And I get 0, 0,67. So E cathode has to be 0, 0,67. So then we go along here, la 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 la, and we see, oh look, that's this one here. Okay, that's 0, 0.68. It's close as damn it to it. So therefore, this has to be the correct answer. So that there is my, it says metal. Cathode minus anode. The chromium 3 plus is the anode, so it's going to be minus. It's right. So that is right. So therefore, that there is O2 plus hydrogen plus two electrons gives you your hydrogen peroxide. So there we go. We know what the half reaction is. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay. So there we go. Let's move on to our next question. It says the electrical electrochemical cell represented below is made up of standard PB, PB2+, half cell, and standard unknown electrode. Okay, the unknown half cell consists of a metal electrode X dipped into solution of metal. Okay, they again tell you that it's 1.53. Okay, and they say to you which electrode PB or X is the anode, but they show you which way the electrons are flowing. Do you see that? And which way do the electrons flow? The electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. The electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. So PB is the cathode, so therefore X is the anode. Now it says identify electrode X with the aid of a calculation. Okay, so we've got PB to PB2 plus. So let's go find PB, PB2 plus. And again, I know this is really small on your formula sheets, I mean on the screen, but like I've said to you guys before, please guys, you need to be having this all this information with you every time you do it. So this is going PB to PB2 plus. Okay, that's the direction. Okay, because it's gaining two electrons to form PB2 plus. Okay, right. Actually, no, it's wrong. It's the and if that's the cathode, the cathode is having reduction, reduction is gain. So it's the other way around. So therefore it is going this way. So we're actually looking for something above it, okay? Do you agree? We're looking for something above it, okay? So now what do we know? We know that this is the cathode. So E theta of the cell is going to be E cathode minus E anode. Okay, it's always bottom minus top. So therefore, it is going to be minus 0, 0,13 minus the E of the anode is going to be this, which is 1,53. So if we take it across, it becomes 1,53 plus 0, 0,13 is minus the E of the anode which is going to be 1,6 six. 
is negative e of the anode. So therefore, the of the anode is minus 1 comma 6, 6. So if I go along, I see, oh, look, there it is there. And then they say, identify electrode X. There it is. It's going to be aluminium. And this is going to be aluminium 3 plus. Okay, so there you go. Now it says the PBPB plus is replaced with the standard AG. AG plus. Okay. Now it says what? It says how will the initial cell potential of the cell compare to that of the above cell? So that was a 1.53. Now we've gone from aluminium and we're going down to silver. So we see that actually what's going to happen is it's going to be a much higher um, cell potential. It's going to be a much higher cell potential because of the fact that it's much further apart. And it says explain this answer by comparing the relative strengths of the oxidizing agents. Okay. So do you agree that the cathode is being reduced? Okay, this is the cathode. So yeah, this cathode is being reduced and this is also being reduced. As it's further down the table, we can say that this is a much stronger oxidizing agent than the lead. And because of that, we can therefore see that it's going to have a much larger reaction with the aluminium. And therefore, we're going to end up with a much greater initial cell potential. Okay, so all you're saying is exactly what you're reading off in this graph, that because it's lower on the graph, on this table, it is obviously a stronger oxidizing agent and therefore will have a greater cell potential. Okay, now they want us to write the cell, cell notation. So remember how this works, it's anode, anode um, electrolyte, salt bridge, cathode, cathode electrolyte. Okay, so this is the anode and it's going from aluminium to aluminium 3 plus and this is the cathode, okay? So the anode is going to be aluminium, aluminium 3 plus, salt bridge and then it's silver AG plus and then AG and what do you always have to write? You always have to write the concentration. So it's one mole per decimeter cubed and one mole per decimeter cubed. And yes, you do have to write it twice for each of the half cells. Okay, so there we go. That is another typical exam paper question. Okay, this question I liked because of the fact that it is quite different from the normal type of questions we get. Okay, just to let you know, grade 12s, what I'm doing is I'm going through a couple more old exam paper questions. I think I've got one, two, three. Yeah, that's it, four, okay? And then we're moving on to rates of reactions. Um, I've chosen these questions specifically because these are all very good exam questions, which um, are actually Typic, either not necessarily typical exam paper questions, and some of them are a little bit interesting. Okay, so that's why I've included them. Okay, it says equations A and B below represent two redox reactions. There's A, which is two aluminium Al2O3 plus three carbon gives you four Al plus three carbon dioxide. Okay, do you recognize that from the aluminium, the reduction of the aluminium? I mean, the purification of the aluminium. And there's zinc plus two silver ions gives you zinc two plus plus Ag. First of all, it says define oxidation in term, terms of electron transfer. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Okay, now it says write down the formula of the substance which A is reduced in reaction A, reduced in reaction A. So if you look at this, do you see that we've got, if we, let me just rewrite uh, this equation. It's 2Al2O3 plus three carbons goes to four aluminium plus three CO2. Okay, now what is, if we think about oil rig, what is oil re reduction? Reduction is the gain 
of electrons. Okay, so what does it become mean? It becomes, becomes less positive. So if we had to break these things up into their ionic states, do you agree that this would be Al3 plus? This is O2 minus. Don't worry about the twos and threes. I mean the two times. Just let's worry about this. Carbon's neutral, so that's a zero. It's carbon zero, okay? Aluminium is also an element, so that is zero. This is going to be carbon. Carbon is going to be, well, that's an interesting one, because this is oxygen. So oxygen is two minus, and then in this case, carbon is going to be two plus. So, yeah. So therefore, do you see that we want something that has become more negative effectively? Okay, in other words, it is not as positive. So you can see that carbon has become more positive. That's not going to work. That's a loss of electrons. Oxygens maintain the same. So what is it? It's the aluminium. The aluminium has gone from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium. So therefore, the reduction half reaction from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium and this is which we'll write on the formula of the substance that is reduced. In this case, it would be the Al. 203 effectively your aluminium 3 plus okay but that is the substance that's reduced now in b they're asking for the reducing agent okay so the reducing agent is the thing that is oxidized okay ox what the heck did i just write okay <laughs> the thing that's reduced is the reducing agent is the thing that's being wait wait what's going on um pen is that being oxidized okay and oxidation is the loss of electrons it's a loss of electrons so let's have a look at this do you agree that zinc is going from zinc to zinc 2 plus so it has become more positive which means that it's been oxidized so what is a reducing agent it is the zinc the zinc is a reducing agent okay now it says a zinc silver Cell has a cell potential of 1.56 volts under standard conditions. This cell is allowed to run for three hours and the cell potential drops to 1.45. It says using Le Chatelier's principle, explain the drop in potential difference. Okay, so remember what we've been speaking about and we actually spoke about this during the lessons. The Chatelier's principle talks about chemical equilibria, right? Chemical equilibrium okay so let's think about this what we have is two half cells okay we've got two half cells and we've got two electrodes and we have a voltmeter if we want one and we've got a salt bridge okay so what is happening is originally we have got lots of zinc and some zinc two plus ions and we've got some silver plus ions and we've got some silver okay the zinc is being reduced, uh, which means that, uh, sorry, the zinc is being oxidized, which means that it's been charred up, okay? It's slowly being used up, and the silver is slowly being coated, okay? So the reactions that are happening is zinc is breaking down to zinc 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, and the silver is Ag plus, plus an electron is becoming Ag. Okay, so what is happening is that as we go along, the reason the cell potential drops is because the reason there's original cell potential is because of the fact that there is a difference in the amount of energy, electrical, chemical energy that each of these has. And the reason that this drops is because of the concentration differences decrease, okay? What happens is as the cell as the cell continues to run, the Ag plus ions are becoming silver. So they are traveling up and they're forming silver. Now, admittedly, if you had, for example, potassium chloride, it's K plus and Cl minus, the salt bridge is desperately trying to refill up this, okay? But the K plus obviously is not silver plus ions. So what's going to happen is the rate at which this de the weight at which this is changing means that this reaction is going to be slowly having a lower concentration of silver plus ions. Similarly, the zinc 
is changing to zinc 2 plus ions. So slowly we're increasing the concentration of the zinc 2 plus ions and the Cl minus ions are traveling in here to try and match, okay? So what is happening is as this reaction is carrying on, we're getting closer and closer to chemical equilibrium, to chemical equilibrium. An equilibrium is being established. Note, not a dynamic, necessarily a dynamic equilibrium, just a chemical equilibrium. So as we get closer and closer to a chemical equilibrium, your potential of the, dif the difference in the voltage or the chemical energy is going to drop, okay? And that is what's happening, is that the cell potential difference is decreasing because of the fact that there is because of the transfer of the ions, we're getting closer and closer to establishing a chemical equilibrium and therefore the voltage will drop. Okay, I hope that helps you. Now it says for reaction A, write down the half reaction at the cathode. Okay, so they want the half reaction at the cathode. So we've already said that reduction is occurring in the AL203 and reduction, remember it's red cat, red cat. So reduction occurs at the cathode. So therefore the half reaction is going to be AL3 plus plus three electrons forms aluminium, okay? Then finally it says what type of energy conversion occurs in the galvanic cell? It is chemical to electrical. So that was quite a nice question as well, don't you agree? Especially this one, yeah, I like that question. Okay, now, okay, this one, in this one, it's an electrolytic question, and the reason I included this is we seem to have been doing a lot of galvanic cells, and they love asking electrolytic questions. So let's go through this, and also what's going on is we're having some nickel plating happening here, which is why I like this question. Okay, it says the diagram below shows a simplified electrolytic cell that can be used to electroplate a plastic ring with nickel. So it's plastic, right? Prior to electroplating, the ring is covered with a graphite layer. The plastic ring is coated with graphite. There's a battery, there's a nickel electrode. And so it's given one reason the plastic ring must be coated with graphite. Well, graphite is an electrical conductor and plastic isn't. So we need to cover it with graphite so that there is a transfer of electrons. Graphite also, and I'm just giving you a second reason, is that it is inert. Okay, it's inert, so it doesn't participate in the reaction, but it does allow for the transfer of electrons and ions for that matter. Okay, now it says write the half reaction that is occurring at the plastic ring. Okay, so we're forming nickel. Do you agree? We want nickel to happen. So if we go look on our half reactions, we need to go look for nickel, and there you can see that nickel is the half reactions are either nickel 2 plus plus 2 electrons forms nickel or nickel breaks up into nickel 2 plus plus 2 electrons. So in this case we want nickel to be formed so therefore the half reaction is Ni 2 plus plus 2 electrons forms nickel. Okay, so grade 12 is what's important about this when we write the half reaction. Let me write it here again. Nickel 2 plus plus 2 electrons forms nickel is that yeah the are on your table the arrows do this they go both ways and that's to show you that the reaction can go both ways okay which is why we end up asking them asking you about chemical equilibrium etc etc okay but when you write your half reaction you have to commit you have to say okay fine i know that the electrons are traveling one way, one specific way in this half reaction. So that is why you always have to show your arrow going one specific way. And in this case, we are forming nickel. So we're going from nickel two plus ions plus two electrons to form nickel, which means what, okay? It says name or um, give the name, write down the name or formula of the reducing agent in the cell. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so the reducing agent Okay, so do you agree that this side we've got Ni2 plus plus two electrons forms Ni? Yeah, we've got Ni goes to Ni2 plus 
plus two electrons. Okay, so if something is a reducing agent, it is being oxidized. Okay, a reducing agent is being oxidized. In degree over here, nickel, and oxidation is the loss of electrons, oil. It's the oil part of the oil rig. So therefore, oxidation is occurring at this electrode. So by the way, this is the anode. Do you agree? And this is the cathode. Okay. So oxidation is happening because we're losing electrons. Okay. And then what do we know? So that what is going to be the reducing agent? It is nickel. Why? Because it's been oxidized and it's losing electrons. Right. Done. Then it says, which electrode, the ring or the nickel, is a cathode? Give a reason for your answer. There we go. I've just done it. It's the cathode because reduction is occurring. There's a gaining of electrons and it's forming nickel. So there, we've done that. Now it says, the nickel electrode is now replaced with a carbon rod. Hmm. Okay, the nickel is replaced with a carbon rod. How does that help? Okay, anyway, so <laughs> we can't possibly do any nickel plating with carbon rod. Okay, but it says, how will the concentration of the electrolyte change during electroplating? Write down only increases, decreases, or no change. Okay, so now we've got a carbon rod happening here. A carbon rod. Okay, so this is now a carbon rod. Okay, carbon rod. Let me just write your carbon. Whoopsie, carbon. This is a carbon rod. Carbon. Okay. So if this is the case, do we agree that that would have been connected if we wanted this to be the cathode, then, and this was the anode? This was what was happening is this was gaining electrons. So this was had to be negative. So this had to be in the negative part of the battery and this had to be the positive end of the battery. So this is still the positive end of the battery. Okay, so this is still the positive end of the battery. So if that's the positive end of the battery, then you could still have, um, you could still have the reaction occurring, but there's a problem. And the problem is during this reaction, the reason you have the nickel electrode is this is what happens. The nickel is changing into nickel two plus plus two electrons, okay? So what is happening is that that's what's happening at this electrode, okay? So it is being charred up to replace the nickel, nickel two plus ions that are being changed to form nickel over here. So that's effectively what happens, okay? Let me explain. Yeah, is your ring. Yeah, is your rod normally, okay? And what happens is the nickel here breaks up into nickel two plus ions. Over here, you've got nickel two plus ions, which then get attracted to the negatively charged thing to form nickel, okay? So because this here is nickel and this here is not nickel, then what happens is this nickel breaks up and what it does is it keeps the concentration of the nickel two plus ions constant which means the electroplating can continue until this is perfectly plated with nickel and then we can remove it. However, if this electrode is carbon, there is no replacement of the nickel two plus ions. So the nickel two plus ions are going to decrease. And why? Because the carbon electrode cannot possibly replace the nickel two plus ions that are being used up on this cathode half cell where the cathode is reacting. Okay, do you understand that? Okay, so the nickel, the whole role of this nickel electrode was to replace the nickel two plus ions that are being used to plate a, plate this um, plastic ring. So if there's no nickel, to, nickel in this electrode, you can't replace the nickel two plus ions. So the concentration of the nickel two plus ions is going to decrease. Okay, right, next question. It says, a medical practitioner at a certain hospital gave a patient two medicines, A and B. Mm. Medicine A contains permanganate ions, MnO4 minus ions. So let's go look over here. We've got MnO2, Mn2 plus, aha, MnO4 minus ions. There they are. Da ding Okay, right. And medicine B contains aluminium ions, Al3 plus ions. That's over there. 
Okay, it says to turn, define the term reduction in terms of electron transfer. Reduction is gain of electrons. Okay, moving on. The medical practitioner did not notice that one of the medicines would poison the patient after ingestion. Okay, that's an interesting medical practitioner, but anyway, basically gave them poison. Bearing in mind that the acid in the stomach is hydrochloric acid, HCl, state which medicine A or B is poisonous when, so, uh, when swallowed. Refer to the relative strengths of oxidizing agents to explain the answer. Okay, so it says bearing in mind that the reaction, that the acid in the stomach is hydrochloric acid. So what you need to realize is that We need to look for another hospital that is going to look for your hydrochloric acid. And I just never look at something here. Um, those are your nitric acids. I think we have to look at just hydrogen. Yeah, we do. So let us look at this reaction here. This reaction here is effectively your hydrochloric acid okay reaction because of the fact let me just check I might be wrong I don't think I am though there's manganese there's chlorine no it's not. Mm. okay so let's think about this um, remember that your hydrochloric acid breaks up into H plus ions plus Cl minus ions okay in solution okay so what we are looking at is a reaction of this stuff, the manganate ions or the aluminium three plus ions with this, okay? So what we need to see is if there's a spontaneous reaction. So we need a reaction, we need a reaction that is going to react with this spontaneously. Let's just change it to color. With this half reaction spontaneously, okay? So do you agree it's going to go from H2 plus to form hydrogen? Okay, that's what they're asking you. They're asking you which one of these is going to form, have a reaction, spontaneous reaction. So this is, the one is aluminium three plus ions. Okay, so we've got aluminium three plus ions needs to react with the H plus. That's not necessarily going to work, but we've got manganese, to look at something we've got manganese manganate okay forming manganese that's the one reaction and the other one contains aluminium three plus ions okay so do you agree we could have a reaction going from aluminium three plus ions would go through to the hydrogen or the manganese ions going reacting with the hydrogen. So now if you look at this, it says refer to the relative strengths of the oxidizing agents to answer these questions. So do you agree oxidizing agents, oxidizing agents are being reduced? Okay, oxidizing agents are being reduced. I've just realized I've made that very awkward for you to actually be able to read. So here we go. Okay, so we're looking for the stronger act reactions that of reduction reactions, the stronger reduction reactions, okay? So remember that if we look at these, which of these is going to be the stronger half reactions? Also remember that reduction occurs at the cathode, okay? So this dude here is a much stronger reduction half reaction than this dude much stronger okay remember reduction is oxidative reduction is the gain of electrons okay so this is the much stronger reduction half reaction or you can think of it as a much stronger oxidizing agent so the one containing the manganate ions is going to be the poisonous one because it is a much stronger oxidizing agent. And therefore, it's going to more likely have a, a spontaneous reaction. Okay, now let's look at the next question. It says, a learner sets up a standard galvanic or voltaic cell of the following half cells, Fe3+, plus, okay, Fe2+, plus, Okay, it's interesting. Okay, and aluminium three plus aluminium. 
Okay. So it says, the learner sets up a standard galvanic cell, Fe3 plus Fe2 plus, okay, and aluminum 3 plus to aluminum. So the Fe3 plus going to Fe2 plus is, yes, yeah, somewhere. I saw it. I did. Okay. Um, there it is. And the other one is, what is it? It's aluminum 3 plus going to aluminum. Okay. There are your two half reactions. Okay. Now it says, write down the name and symbol of electrode X. Okay. Well, electrode X could just be carbon because what are we looking for? We're looking for um, a reaction between two aqueous solutions. So I would say electrode X has to just be carbon. Now it says which electrode X or Y undergoes a decrease in mass. So first of all, electrode Y is aluminium. Okay, why did I choose carbon? I chose carbon because it's an inert, um, an inert um, compound. In other words, it doesn't participate in the reaction. And what does it do? It basically, um, sorry, and it transports electricity. Okay, so now which electric X will undergo mass well we've got this reaction and this reaction for it to be spontaneous you need to follow the C so let's draw a C so it's going to go from aluminium to aluminium 3 plus ions and then from the Fe3 plus to the Fe2 plus okay so therefore we can say that aluminium is being oxidize the so aluminium is going to aluminium three plus plus three electrons and yeah we've got Fe three plus plus an electron goes to Fe two plus and notice it says aqueous over there so be careful of that okay so which of these is undergoing a decrease it is electrode Y because it's been oxidized so determine the initial EMF of the cell under standard conditions okay so therefore it's always cathode minus anode so it's E cell is E of the cathode minus E of the anode which is going to be 0,77 minus and this one's minus 1, 66, which is 0, 77 plus minus times minus the plus 1, 66, which is 6 and 7 is 13 carry 1, 6 and 7 is 13, 14 carry 1, which is 2.43 volts. So the initial EMF of the cell is 2.43 volts. It says describe one measurement that must be made before the voltmeter is connected in the circuit. Okay, there are a couple of measurements, but one of them would be the temperature. It needs to be 297 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. The concentration of the solutions both have to be one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, and the pressure has to be one atmosphere. So there you go. Now it says, the ends of the salt bridge are stopped by bits of cotton. Explain why this is a good idea. Okay, basically we don't want this to just flow out, but what we do want is to allow, this kind of works as a, a permeable membrane. Okay, permeable membrane. It allows for the ions to travel through without allowing for these solutions to mix thoroughly. Okay, and that's effectively what we want. We don't want them to go whoosh out. We want there to be kind of like um, a porous membrane that allows for the transfer of the ions into these solutions without actual transfer of the solutions themselves. Okay, then it says write down the balance or net ionic equation for the overall cell reaction. Okay, again it goes anode to cathode. Okay, and we said that this was oxidation was happening here, so this is the anode and this is the cathode. Okay, so in this case it would be Al Al3 plus for the salt bridge and then it's going to be cathode is going to be Fe3 plus Fe2 plus 
And then what you need to do is you need to put a comma and a carbon to let them know that you know that you're using an electrode that is not part of this, okay? Right, and then you need to write the concentration. It is one mole per decimeter cubed and one mole per decimeter cubed. Right, grade 12, and that's it for today. Um, tomorrow we will start with rates of reaction and collision theory and everything to do with that. Have a wonderful evening. Cheers.